class requirement number two, part C. On one camp out, demonstrate proper care, sharpening, and use of the knife, saw, and axe, and describe when they should be used. Part of every camp out is doing camp chores, splitting wood, clearing a trail, starting a fire. Having the right tools for the job and knowing how to use them can turn chores into rewarding and safe fun. For nearly any camp task, the basic tools are a pocket knife, an axe, and a camp saw. From cutting a rope to opening a can of food to repairing camp gear, a good pocket knife is just about the most versatile tool you can have. A good pocket knife for general use has a can opener, a screwdriver blade, and two blades for cutting. The most important part of using a pocket knife is to do it safely. So let's go over a few do's and don'ts. Do keep your blades closed except when you're using them. Always cut away from yourself. Close the blades before you hand the knife to someone. Keep your knife sharp and clean. A sharp knife is easier to control than a dull one. Do make a safety circle. If you can stretch your arms out, turn in a circle and not touch anyone, it's safe to use your knife. And always obey school regulations that prohibit carrying knives on school property. Now for the don'ts. Don't carry a knife with an open blade. Don't throw a knife, don't cut towards yourself, and don't strike your blade with another tool or pry with the blade point. It can bend or break. The Boy Scouts doesn't encourage the use of large sheath knives that can be awkward and heavy. A good pocket knife is a much better tool for camping. For guidelines on cleaning your pocket knife and keeping it sharp, be sure to check your Boy Scout handbook. Now, when it comes to wood cutting, a camp saw is usually the right tool. Either a folding saw with a blade that opens and closes, or a bow saw with a curved metal frame. There are also some important do's and don'ts for using a camp saw safely. Do sheath a saw whenever you're not using it. You can make a sheath out of a piece of old garden hose. Carry a saw with the blade turned away from your body. Replace saw blades when they become dull and start binding. Have a spare blade with you. Be careful when you pass a saw to someone else. And wear gloves and protective eyewear when you're sawing. Now for the don'ts. Don't cut any trees, alive or dead, without permission. Don't let a saw blade cut into the ground, it dulls the blade. And don't leave a saw lying around camp. Now, here are some techniques for using a camp saw. When you're sawing firewood, brace it against something solid. Use smooth strokes, let the saw do the work. To saw a branch from a tree, make an undercut first, then saw from the top down. That way, the bark won't strip off the trunk as you finish the cut. Your Boy Scout handbook has more details on using and maintaining a camp saw. The axe has a long and colorful history in America. It makes you think of pioneers cutting trails through the wilderness. Today, the axe is still a useful tool for splitting wood and clearing trails, but it can also be dangerous. It requires practice and special attention to safety. So, if a job can be done with either an axe or a camp saw, the saw is always the best choice. An ax should be kept in top condition. If the head is loose or the blade is dull, don't use it until it's fixed. And wear heavy duty shoes or boots when you're chopping. Make sure other people are at least 10 feet away when you're cutting. You may want to rope off an ax shard if you're camping several days. The right ax technique is both safer and more efficient. When you chop branches off a log, stand on the side opposite from the branch. Keep the log between you and the limb in case the axe misses. When you're cutting through a log, hold the axe with one hand near the head and the other close to the knob on the handle. Lift the head above your shoulder and slide your hands together as you swing the cutting edge into the log. Let the weight of the axe head do most of the work. Aim your blows to cut a V-notch in the log. Splitting wood is best done on a chopping block, so any misses go into the block, not your leg. Stand a larger piece of wood upright on the block and drive the ax into the top end. If it doesn't split, pull the ax out and try again. Never swing an ax with a piece of wood stuck on it. Ax handling, carrying, and storage are also important parts of safety. Put a sheath on the ax and carry it at your side with the blade turned away from your body. Never carry an ax slung over your shoulder. Pass an ax to someone else holding the handle with the ax head down and point it away from both of you. Release your grip when the other person says thank you. And last, to sharpen your axe properly, you'll need an eight to 10 inch file made for sharpening blades. Wear leather gloves to protect your hands, and you may want to make a knuckle guard out of a piece of heavy leather. You can get a handle for the file at the hardware store. Now, brace the axe head on the ground between a log and two wooden pegs or tent stakes. Another scout can help hold the axe steady. 
Place the file on the edge of the blade and push it into the bit with enough pressure to cut into the metal. Then lift the file off the axe and repeat the downward stroke. Use firm, even strokes and keep count. So when you turn the axe over to sharpen the other side, you can use the same number of strokes. And remember, a dull edge reflects light, so continue to file until the edge seems to disappear. That's second class requirement 2C. The care, sharpening, and use of a pocket knife, saw, and axe. The key here is safety, so study the information in your Boy Scout handbook. Work with your leader to learn safe techniques. And then practice until you're ready to demonstrate your knife, saw, and axe skills for your leader.